said about Bangi. This is one of the scenarios they are targeting Bangi as a jungler because they think he is the weakness point that they can attack, especially because he's only shown success on those two banned champions. Right. Now. Yeah. Whenever these two have been banned, he's gone for something like Gragas, and we haven't really seen the same impact from him clear off. He's shown multiple junglers beforehand. Sichuan has been a big pick for him. SK Telecom has to expect that coming in from Edward Gaming, and that gives them a very, very strong team fight, which we know they love to play around. Yeah, and there's also some big power picks here between Urgot and Callista, as well as Rek'Sai were the three that Rek'Sai we were thinking about. Last so at this point, I'm I'm a little bit surprised SK Telecom banned Twisted Fate and then didn't force either an Urgot or Callista ban on the other side, because now it's going to be either they get Urgot or they get Callista, right. depending on if the ban from Edward Gaming is Urgot or not. So the reason they banned Twisted Fate here is it's a bit of an empty ban because what they want to happen here is that Urgot Kalista is open and they can take the Urgot away because I don't think they're too afraid of death on Kalista. He needs to prove yeah. some more how he can perform. So if you get Urgot now for Bang, you should win that lane matchup. Whoa. That would be very different though. <laughs> that is clearly really different. Take of course Sidwani they're going to take anyway. Urgot now. Clearlove would prefer Sejuani over Gragas. He's never been a big Gragas player. And it means they can lock down the Thresh. Mako this is has so big Thresh. play for gaming. Mako has played Thresh seven of the eight games, and right. he's such a playmaker. It also works extremely well with the way Edward Gaming is playing here, because they're opportunistic with the tendency to go too far some of the time. When you put Mako on a support like Thresh, the Lantern can get them out of so many precarious situations. And those, this early draft phase, looks incredibly favorable for Edward Gaming. They will be giving up Callista, though, to SKT. Yeah, and so clearly SK Telecom is happy enough taking that bot lane matchup for themselves, but I still think this Gragas is not necessarily needed as a first pick because of what Clearlove likes to play. It does, however, mean you also get your first top lane pick, and this is going to be a big deal because both these top laners also share somewhat the same champion pool. Marco has been a big one for EDG. That's taken away by Mari. But we did mention how it is extremely difficult to approach this pick and ban phase because the two picks that SKT just locked in, they're going to have Bang on Callista, which is undefeated in competitive right. history, 7 0, and Marin on Maokai, who is now 15 and 1 with it in competitive play. It's not like SKT is getting denied anything, it's just these teams are sharing their champion pools. And that is the crazy thing about the current meta, where there are so many viable champions yep. in each role. As long as you have a team that can master close to every single one of them, you can have these pick and ban phase where suddenly you start banning away things like Twisted Fate, Alistar, you start banning junglers, and there's still so many good picks open for both teams. Another one is going to be the mid lane matchup here. Cassiopeia and Azir are both open. They were banned last time by EDG against Easy Hoon, but now we've seen they can also play them. Can they play it at the same level, though, as the Hoon in the mid lane? We'll have to see. We do know that Maokai continuously now being picked up by SKT because it's a for sure lane. And once they can get to that late game fight, it has been theirs. Even down 10, 15,000 in gold, we do see the rest of them locked in. And it is going to be now the counter for Pawn in the mid lane. His LeBlanc and TF were taken away. Yeah, so obviously the anti Callista is going to be an incredibly strong dual lane. I expect a ton of action in that bottom lane especially since they've opted to go with Easy Hoon in the mid lane, who typically doesn't receive as much gank assistance. Yeah. Pawn gets the last pick to go against Cassio here, though. And we can really see what SKT have been Did you hear Noriana doing. <laughs> Jad, I know you're live. I've been love so excited about Noriana here. Let's wait and see what he does. Yes! There you go. I get been, it. I've been talking to official can attest to this all week about whether or not Oriana will be seen at the midseason invitational because it is, in my opinion, such a great enabler, especially in tank teams that can put shields on the guys that are stacking resistances, which is what's happening here. Pawn also played Oriana back in 2014. Yeah. He just hasn't played it at all this year, even in the playoffs where Godby was crushing some games on it against EDG, and now he brings it out. But here's the problem with this pick here, also with the jungle pick for Clear Love, is your 2v2 mid lane between Oriana and Sejuani, it is not very strong. Your two ulties are very easy to flash out of in terms of skirmish fighting. The Cassiopeia Gragas combo is going to be a lot stronger for SK Telecom. And they play so much around this mid lane control because that leads into pink walls in the river, which leads into these dragons they always play around in the early game. So this is going to be very risky for Edward Gaming in terms of the mid lane matchup. Well, we do know EDG prides themselves with a plus five in the category of fight mechanics. So maybe they can round up that Glacial Prison and the Oriana Shockwave to come in big. Jack. As you were looking at kind of the Orianas, you found out that most of the teams that play second were really playing the Oriana, not able to get to the first to be the champions of their region. 
see if Pong can change that. Let's hope it's not a curse to play Oriana all the way to second place. But they're bringing it out in the finals here. Right. This is going to be awesome. All right. Let us know who you think is going to win the midseason invitational tweet at LOL Esports and use the hashtag SKTWIN or EDGWIN. We'll see how you are calling this series once we are on the rift and we are about to see what these teams have for each other. EDG has consistently made early game moves towards the bot lane, seeing if there's an opening there. They've also tried to adapt early game very quick to put themselves on the board first. SKT, we have seen, has fallen behind yeah. without having an aggressive early game. Well, if you look at SK Telecom and back in Korea and LCK, there's only really been one team who played this aggressive style of Fnatic and EDG and AHQ. That was the KT role, so they didn't even make playoffs. So SKT didn't really get too much practice against yeah. the style. Now they've had this entire tournament to adapt. They could go back, rewatch the semifinal, and that's where they need to show now they've learned from it, and they can play more reactive to what EDG is doing. And historically, even going back to the Season 3 World Championship, SKT has been really good at ad adapting mid tournament to things that have been happening against them. And obviously, the five games they played against Fnatic, with the last one being the most successful for SKT, means they're going to have something planned yeah. to try and deal with these high pressure early and mid game teams. It was very clear they learned for that last game, because it was yep. more about counter gank and what Fnatic were trying to do and keep defensive wards. And then you just had Bengi try and shut down Rainover in the jungle to stop this early pressure from coming. Very standard start here. Marnie's gonna set up the camp at the Raptor for himself. And let's just quickly talk about the lane matchups. Because what SK Telecom decided to do by giving this Urgot was say, EDG, if you pick Urgot here, you have to go bottom lane, because Urgot is not a, a strong AD carry in the lane swap. So we pick Kalista Annie, which is one of the strongest 2v2 kill lanes possible, and we take that fight, because we know you're going to be on the bottom side. We know we can win it, maybe with a gank, and transition that into a dragon. Meanwhile, also, because Sejuani is locked in for EDG, Cleanse has been taken for easy Moon, and that's not going to help him in the one-on-one -on -one matchup against an Orianna. We'll see what Easy Hoon can do. Definitely was able to get first blood onto Kuro with that Cassiopeia in the mid lane towards their finals. We'll see if he can go as aggressive on it once again. He had Ignite that time. This time he's running the cleanse, so we may see it be a little bit safer. We do get the duo matchup, though. Junglers are in the bottom, so they should be heading towards the top side. So maybe a little time before we get some intervention from them. And something we've seen a ton of in this event specifically, is the jungler's actually starting a buff instead of starting at a grub. But this yep. bottom lane is going to be incredibly aggressive early. Bang and Wolf want to hit level two first. Yeah. Typically when we see their bottom lanes help out the jungler on the buff, it's when they want to set him up for very healthy, very early gank on the opposite side of the map. So you can see Bang, he's already rushed straight to the blue buff. He's close to full HP once he's faded out and has the potion ticking. So he can look for ganks if he wants to. You can also just play it safe. That's why you get different options for yourself. But Klilov is on his own rep of And look at Pink. He's already moving up towards the Rift Scotland. Yeah, Marin was able to push in that lane so he could get some harassment on Klilov. And Bengi's already on the way. Notice he took Body Slam early right here. He's not yet level 3, but he can dash the wall. But his smite won't Ooh. be up. But look at how low Klilov is. He's got a smite right now for the health. Flashes over, hits Klilov. That's red buff, though. Not going to be enough slow. And Bangi just gets control of that jungle. See if Clearlock can repair this. And this whole setup was pre planned from SK Telecom. And a lot of trading in the mid lane. That's low mana for Easy Hill. And those auto attacks are stacking up with the clockwork wind up. Pawn shields. Just a few more, and it will not be enough. He would have needed two more on the Kragas. Oh, Bangi is on call right now for Easy Hoon. It's going to be up to him if he can get that red buff after the body slam. One more shield in for Pawn. Still has vision from the ghost, but I think Pawn is going to be able to do it. No! He makes it through the dissonance. Then he flies. Oh! with his summoner spells during that gank attempt. Bengi was coming in with no flash. Instead of flashing the initial barrel, he tried to cleanse the slow, but obviously Bengi could get his cooldowns back and land his fat body slam. <laughs> Pawn obviously couldn't dodge that. If he flashes with the first summoner spell, he saves cleanse and he stays alive. Really that body slam was the one he had to just dodge away from. The damage he took from it, the slow and everything means he goes down. But again, this whole setup from SK Telecom was started by them leashing the red buff for Bengi so he could rush 
from the red buff to blue buff and then have Marin walk down toward the red buff of EDG because even if Marin had been caught out, Bengi would have been nearby to help him. So it was a fairly safe play in that case for him to pull off and look for that invade. Just great scouting also on the jungle pathing of Clear Love doing blue buff to the, the, yeah. the walls yeah. and then moving over. Things not really going in the way of EDG here. They've been hit in the jungle, now the mid lane, and Bengi's getting everything he wants here to start it off. We've said SKT is a little shy in the early game to get things going, but yeah. they're out of the gate here. Well, one of the big ways they pulled ahead of Fnatic at the end of that series was with some slick jungle pathing from Bengi, which then contained the rest of the team and then set up for SKT drag control. They're starting to get this right now. Bengi's First pick Gragas, remember, over the Urgot because they spent yeah. two bands on him. This is Bengi needing to prove himself as a jungler who can play more than just those Nunu and Rek'Sai. And it really just seemed like by SK Telecom first picking the Gragas, they knew exactly what EDG was going to pick. We called out the Sejuani was going to come in for clear love. We knew the Urgot was going to be locked in. And then they drafted these champions here that could beat them in the early game and use that to play against EDG and then with the early start. Good setup. We mentioned the 2v2 in the mid lane with the Gragas Cassiopeia, how strong it's going to be for SKT. With such a good start, you can always, already see a CS difference between the two mid laners. This is going to be massive for SKT Telecom. Look for these early pink wards, pink wards to come in around this mid lane here, near the bottom side of the map, so they get some dragon control as well. Dragon control also chances to rinse and repeat and go back at pawn with both summoners down. We just see Bengi flip in the top side of the jungle here, making sure that side of the map is safe for now. Not really worried about Bang and Wolf. Easily able to control that lane in the bottom side. Koro getting a little aggressive here onto Marn, but he can't really do anything with it as the way it's going for the turret. At this point, EDG is almost having to stall out the early game, which is actually not too uncommon for them over in the LPL. They have been able to stall out many games and still pull it out later game victories. So at this point, since Clear Love did fall behind fairly heavily, don't expect Clear Love to cross the river into the enemy jungler that frequently. And he would, at best, try and set up counter ganks with Bengi, since the Urgot fresh lane is still something that would be able to win 3v3s despite the early disadvantage there. All these wards right now, seeing Clear Love. They saw him on that scuttle with a ward just down in the brush. Pinged out there by SKT. Good hop from Koro. Just a little aggression here from the top lane. Really making sure that SKT is getting easy lanes everywhere. Interesting that Koro's sticking around so long. I don't think he'll yeah. be able to take anything. That's worth. <laughs> Bang, is body slam for Flash. EDG is so greedy in this game. It was a thing they did against AHQ as well, where they were like over chased for certain kills and ended up dying for it and really were just so eager to make some plays, it seems, or maybe even save summoner spells we saw before in the mid lane, and now it's Koro staying around top. It's definitely a Koro tendency. We saw the hack room dies going a little deep. He loves his CS in that top lane. Hopefully it pays off in the end. He only actually fell behind about four CS there for his flash, so he's still pretty safe in the top lane. Paying off for him so far. Easy Hoon in the face of Pawn right now, and he's forced to use his full mana bar just to keep farming out. Should get a lot of help here from the blue transfer. This really is just such a problem for Edward Gaming. The fact they can barely move into the river without being spotted by SK Telecom, because they will never be able to set up proper ganks unless they can pull up like a, a lantern in the bottom lane once the up hits level 6 to try and get something on SK Telecom. Then it's just a matter of time before SKT will start moving in around this dragon here, bait some of these fights with superior vision, and force EDG into bad ones if they take it. EDG is a team, though, who tend to leave these dragons. Yeah. Don't mind you getting a few in the early game. It's more about the late game team fights into a Baron. Oftentimes, EDG will give up those dragons just so they can either parlay that into a Baron or keep their farm up, and that's what it looks like they're going to be going for. I mean, Koro's greed in that top lane was a little bit perplexing because I was wondering what items he was waiting to find. He goes back, buys a Hex Drinker, and then because he stayed around for that extra wave and a half, picked up a Pink Ward and a Sight Ward, which, as far as Nara in the top lane right now, is just trying to gain some of that vision control back that Clear Love won't be able to provide for him yep. due to his start with his bus getting stolen away. A little bit of tussle here over a pink ward in the top. Marn can't do much. Dragon may also be hard for EDG to fight as well. Pawn here, as you would, leveling his Q against Easy Hoon, but that's not going to be able to deliver much damage if they get into a big objective fight down at Dragon with a Shockwave. So everything playing in favor of SKT to keep their 90% Dragon numbers up. 90% of the time, they get that for a Dragon. And here's one of those uh, plays around the early pink wards from SK Telecom. Bengi deciding that 
EDG is playing a little bit too defensive, too far back, realizing that they had no vision around the tri bush. But they have two wards now around the dragon, and Bengi is moving in towards the mid lane. Very so safe play from lane. Pawn so yeah. far. Look for that lands on play we from Mako. We can see a couple of different ganks here at the same time. Oh. All right. A little bit of a help there for Pawn to get out. That's why Pawn needed to bring the cleanse and flash. Because of the threat of the flash body slam, he had to cleanse it immediately, flash before the ultimate could come through. But one summoner from the jungler for two summoners from Pawn should continue that mid lane so easy Hoon can continue to farm. I really like what SKT is doing here with ganking the mid lane again and again. Not something that Bengi and Easy Hoon have been known for as a duo, but it's definitely beneficial here. Oh, a little bit of love here in the bottom lane. The swap onto Bang. Deft is in a great position to stop him from getting to the turret. Wolf needs to run away right now, and he does so. But EDG make moves in that bottom lane yeah. to get Deft Party going. In the bot lane. We talked about how they could set up a gank here. Lane gank from Sejuani, then yeah. lands him from the Thresh. It's hard to do anything against it. And you saw it also flash and swap the Kalista after she'd already pulled in Annie with the ulti, just to keep them in place, force every single defensive summoner, get the kill they need, Meanwhile, top lane, Koro with this early hex trinker, putting a lot of pressure on Marin. I mean, that's another reason he wanted the ward control. He greeted for that extra CS. Koro knows exactly when to push his advantages. Marin is doing his best to try and neutralize this laning phase, which he is so good at as Maokai, and then he can go and make TP plays. Yeah. Koro, though, doing his best to keep the pressure up, and EDG may actually get this first dragon out of that. As soon as Bengi showed in the top lane and Def died, oh sorry, Bang died in the bottom lane, EDG knows they can go straight for the dragon. This is very important. They stop SKT from getting these early on. So nice setup. Wow. Using Mako and Thresh, one of the picks they got in the first rotation, which has been so important all tournament long. We always talk, we've been talking to Fischio about EDG's opportunistic play. They are so aggressive, but only when they see the, the slightest bit of information. Bengi, even though he's known as a dragon control jungler, showed top lane. As soon as he did that, they take dragon. As soon as he stays top, they go for him. Not a whole lot of explosive damage from Pawn just yet. They're able to get a few hits onto Bengi here. It doesn't look like, actually, it does look like Pawn was missing quite a bit of CS for his troubles on that roam as well. So, easy hoon. Still doing what he can here. You can see the average first dragon, usually SKTs. That Baron could also be a problem as well. Baron a bit earlier for EDG, obviously the one. We so often see them get, and then they use that to close out the games for themselves. But EDG has been having a great time here in the mid lane. He got an early TS, just been stacking, not been under any pressure, honestly. Mainly due to Ping and the help he's provided in this mid lane for SK Telecom. So they are still heading gold, but Deft also with that kill. Let's see if he's in trouble. It's dropped on the Lantern plays. Mako getting him out safe. And just notice the positioning for Mako here before that play even happens. He's predicting that SKT want to all in, so he positions himself very far back so he can throw that Lantern to Death, who doesn't have a flash anymore, and pull him out. That's just great play as support when you can read, okay, when is there a high chance they will go aggressive, and how do I position myself to help my AD carry? And it's been really impressive to watch the synergy between Deft and Mako as the LPL split has progressed. Mako didn't even start as the main partner for Def. They were playing Mouse in a lot of their earlier games in the LPL. Mako came in, made some big plays in his first game in the LPL, yeah. and there's been no looking back ever since. His Thresh is extremely strong. His Annie is as well, which is why he knows how to play against oh. it so well. Pawn getting stuck in the mid lane. Easy Hoon actually hit him with a Noxus Blast just earlier to stop his back, and it results in the kill as Bengi comes in. Might not be over yet, Riff. Oh, Wolf gets the stun on. A good grab there to stop Bengi's extra damage. Damage, but they put Clear Love in a perfect spot to take him down. Everybody gets out pretty much unscathed on that one. Looks like a bit of a tussle here between the tanks in the top lane is the Wet Noodle fight. Actually getting down is a pretty low HP here. But it looks like they're just going to trade a few smiles and walk away from this one. Got to talk about the mid lane play from Uzi Easy Hoon though. He's used yeah. that early advantage again and again. Marin actually oh. is in trouble. Hey, no, he's looking for that passive heal. Wasn't enough. Hello, Hex Drinker. Koro in the end, winning the trade here. He flashed all the Mari back into the tower, and the Mari instantly just jumped back out. They were fighting for quite a while up there. In the end, a kill for Koro in this NAR matchup, where he will have the pressure. Very well played for the best NAR player in China. You almost never see a solo kill on the Maokai, especially Marin's Maokai. 
unbelievable that Koro was able to take him down there. And then the same thing. You don't see Pawn giving up solo kills to Easy Hoon, but this this Easy Hoon is almost like a man reborn when he came out in the finals of the LCK. He got multiple solo kills against the GE Tigers in that final series. And even though he did have a nice start from Bengi here, his ability to take that advantage, not passive yeah. farm it, but turn it aggressive. It's like a new operated version of Faker. <laughs> Oh, man. You're going to get a lot of hate from that. See what Easy Hoon can do. I love how these guys are still going aggressive in the mid lane, though, with these passive summoner spells. Easy Hoon looks to make a little bit more trouble for Clear Love here as he heads towards the red. Actually, they're just going to go for this pink that was placed some time ago. Easy Hoon keeping that in mind. And it's just so fun to see how both teams are reacting to each other. After that play happened in the bottom lane where Death was saved by the lands and he took a lot of damage. Yeah. SKT knew, okay, now we can play aggressive in another lane because we can roam before they can on the bottom side. That's why they went for the dive, got the kill safely. Bengi, he's waiting How in the bush is here. Gonna wait? He's going in now, he's waiting for some more support. Wolf is coming as well. Wolf should be able to get there in time. Very nicely done. Crowd control a bit stacked there, giving Koro time to move right away. But Wolf has the rest to finish this off. The wallop keeps him in place. Nobody else is roaming up here, and EDG's not able Still to get of anything. Koro running out, dodges the turn. as well here EDG they're trying to respond on the other side of the map a lot of resources being used up top Pawn feels like he has a good fight here against Easy Hoon the blue buff however ticking for Easy Hoon and Pawn short on that mana Koro is a god of top lane and he's building up some nice magic just to make those ganks even more difficult for SKT they send three and they lose one Unbelievable. Not expecting that for sure. So much was used in that top lane to take him down. Still has his teleport up, and he actually misses hardly any CS as he gets back to lane here. We'll see how much he can get that lane push and what pressure now EDG can start to create. The game is even. Yeah. First Dragon is theirs with the next one a minute away. When that gank happened in the top lane, Koro was actually waiting on his Gnar ultimate. It was down at the beginning of this, and he just gets enough CC, jumps away. The instant Bengi goes down, the flash is already burned beforehand, and then he gets knocked back, but it doesn't end there, yeah. Fischio. So Wolf coming in here. Remember, Koro has so much magic resist, and all the damage he is magic-based onto him. So in the end, also with the ulti, he stays oh. alive, and now he's just keeping the distance. Wolf will use Tipperus, just missing. And flash. And he gets the boomerang. Wolf just had a terrible day right there walking into the turret because he was hoping Marin was a little bit ahead thanks to the Gnar ultimate. It wasn't. Wolf didn't want to wait a second because he was barely thinking he was in range for the Flash Tibbers, so he ended up taking the turret aggro, and it just cost him his life. Ooh. Quick cleanses today. <laughs> Super quick cleanse on that one. Mako thought he was going to be pulling himself in a snake, and Easy Hoon slithered away. We'll see what they got on this one. A little bit more action towards the bottom lane, gentlemen. Yeah, SKTF set up all the wards we normally see from around the river. EDG, there is teleport for them yes. and not for Marin in this top lane. So they can start it and get a 5 versus 4. EDG has the TP advantage and one of the flaws of SKT this tournament has them been fighting over dragons when they aren't actually prepared to do so. Coral could get his teleport interrupted and they're getting Mako. What a choke point for Wolf to mark his territory with Timbers. Get in there very nicely. Looks like they're going to be all right on this one. And they get out. Dragon could be theirs for the second one. Deft coming up from the bottom side with Clear Love now. And actually, they will reposition. Vision is still there for SKT. Keep in mind, EG still has that teleport here. Marin just not up yet. They're waiting around. Oh, Wolf is so low at this point. Koro has been engaged in a fight with Marin. Marin was pushed back behind his turret, and Koro would be Meganar in a second. So they had to respect the teleport from Koro despite the catch. That advantage and the bullying in that top lane created the dragon opportunity. So two dragons now for EDG. SKT got the mid tower in response. They decided to back away after the first engage. Just take a tower, get some global gold. Yes, you get a dragon, but at least we get something yeah. else on the map. But this matchup in top lane, with Koro being such a bully to Marin, that's going to mean this top tower, if he keeps sitting in the one-on-one, -on -one, will go down, and there's nothing SKT can really do to stop him. And also, if you look at the lineup for SK Telecom, Bang is obviously the only one doing physical damage. So early on for Koro, he can go for Hexring, he can go for Spectral Cowl very early, gets so much MR, that even in the 2v1s, even the 1v3, v1s. he yeah. can tank up a lot of damage, and it's only Bang who can really take him down. 
as long as he keeps stacking some Amar here in the mid game. Yeah, we talked about Marin being 15 and 1 in pro play on Naokai. Well, Koro try 18 and 1 on Nar. Isn't like, that a fantastic thing, though? These guys win a lot of games, and now somebody does have to lose. Right now, Koro is <laughs> winning the top lane. It's going to be a sad day for someone, but we'll still have at least two more games, depending on how they go in this best of five series. 29,000 to 20, just about 28,000. And you can see the gold differences here as we approach 20 minutes. And as EDG got the bot lane tower a few minutes ago when we had that trade in the top lane, they can now swap Deft and Mako up here. Marin already being pushed back, and he's going to have to go back to base if he doesn't die. The cavalry is coming through the top lane here for EDG as well. This could be where they dive a little too, too far. They're on to Marin, but that's going to be Koro going down. Do they know to back up now? No, Clearo. Clearlove rather says we're going in with a glacial prison. Now on to Marin once again, but somehow he stays alive again. And now they're back on to Mako. Six to four in a dive EDG did not want. Marin always making sure to weave in his auto attacks. Here comes the Hoon. Oh, puts up the box. Bengi's going to fly right through the wall. Pick himself up another one. 3-0-3 three, three on that Kragas pick. And this right here was how SKT beat Fnatic in game five. They read what, they were, what, what was about to happen. Their aggressive move coming in, and they counter ganged it instantly. You saw the move from the base, so once the dive happened, Bang was there, the rest of SKT joined in, they turned it around, they get the kills instead. And it was a beautiful read too, because Koro had been bullying that lane for a while. The dragon was down, the bottom turret was down. Yeah. That was the natural progression for a smart team to go, was EDG running top lane. SKT also hung back a little bit right there. Every single time EDG committed to the turret is when the next person ended up showing up for SKT. Do this again. You can just see, look at your minimap here, how both teams are running to this lane. EDG thinks they're going to have a numbers advantage. That's why they go for the dive, but quickly realize, oh, Bang is here now. Bang is even on his way. And Bang just go way too aggressive. Jumping forward <laughs> on his own, gets swapped back and dies. But and then, suddenly it's EDG who wants more. The next person who goes in the turret also gets punished because that's when a new challenger arrives and it's Bengi. Ooh. Then they continue to fall back. Pawn could not chase Cassio through the mid lane thanks to that disadvantage. And we ended up with another kill for Eden, for SKT. We're back though in this one-on-one -on -one with Koro and Marin. <laughs> they keep trading. Koro keep winning out on the trades. Bengi is around though. We see a lot of wards have been swapped to this top side because both teams were fighting just before. Bengi These will guys. be spotted as well. But the rest of EDG is still around. Bang should be able to get a bot lane tower here because Depth is moving away. So as long as SK Telecom, Telecom can keep defending these outer turrets, mm -hmm. they will create a bigger goal lead. It's like these top laners are going to be mad at their AD carries. They're saying, guys, we're getting all this action and we're farming better than you. Look at these guys, 198, just about even on Koro's side with all that action in the top lane, still focusing throughout the chaos up there and still being able to provide for their teams. Still more focused towards this top side. We know <laughs> EDG's prerequisite to winning a game is having to take that Baron first. Yeah, and also with EDG moving top side, it exactly is for that Baron. Even a kill on Damar, and he's Ooh. all alone. All right, so 5v1 is probably going to go in favor of EDG on that time. We'll see how SKT can control this. But honestly, he should have expected this. There's just been so many members around. They haven't yeah. seen Deft on the map for a long time. EDG moved there to either take top tower or maybe start an early Baron in case Bang had stayed bottom in to take tower here. Now it seems like SKT will be able yeah. to get something in return because EDG is just backing away, back to their own turrets here. Every time you send five people to one lane, 20 minutes into the game, you're giving up something. Uh, this is yeah. mainly a turret trade, and I do think to Fischio, it's more about the Baron control when the next yeah. Dragon comes up, so there are split points of focus, since mainly EDG has given up a lot of gold in those ganks, and there's a really big power spike there from Izuhun on Cassiopeia. That's a good initiation. Oh, looking at Mako. Wolf still on the front line with his Tibbers, making sure Tibbers is taking those skill shots as they try to get around EDG. They exit towards the top side of the map where Koro will already be taking down that top turret. So no real pressure here for SKT to get back in and fight. They're yep. going to pressure mid. But all SKT wanted to do was push EDG away from the mid lane and down into the river so they could start pushing up the lanes further, have at least some threat on the tier 2 tower in the mid lane. So EDG stays alive. They end up trading out of turrets for themselves here. But both teams, very early on, starting to group up. This is going to be so much about these big, big team fights. Yep. And both teams are going to be very tanky if we look at the jungler and the top laner. Whoa. Difference is going to be, of course, the AD carry-wise. Bang is there to try and dance around, get some damage in, where Urgot is just going to stand in the middle and take everything. And I think another big difference is going to be how the fights start. Because 
we have seen a lot of games, especially in the LPL Finals, where big game-breaking team fights happen just off of killing a ward. SKT as well has made a tremendous amount of success off of finding picks. Wolf with the distortion boots on Annie. We saw him attempting to do it in the mid lane, but he went a little early before the rest of his team was able to support him. Would be one of the big catalysts. So many people capable of making big time picks on that SKT team. Yeah, even for both teams, honestly, Sejuani on the side of EDG, flash ulti from death can start fights. Mago has been landing hooks left and right. We should see Righteous Glory being completed soon for Marin as well, so he adds some mobility. He likes to delay to sit on the catalyst yeah. and get some tanky stats first, because he also has other ways of engaging through his support in this situation here. Well, SKT has definitely still been able to find the advantage in this game, keeping EDG to a very uncommon less than a kill a minute here. Vigar. He has very flash. tempered in their play. Wolf stopping out. Koro Bengi right into the middle. No. Of that one flashes himself out. Koro tries to get in. A nice ulti coming out of that, and it looks like they're going to try to keep it going. Pawn goes down. There's no focus from the AP carry in the mid now, and they are going to start wearing down on the tanks. Clear love falls. Mako has already gone down. Koro is not long for this world, and Deft is forced to run for the fountain. And that was a very, very tricky team fight for EDG to take. If you look at SK Telecom and their carries here, both of them have completed at least two items, and that's why they spike very hard in terms of damage. We can say one and a half them for the Kalista didn't really complete static shift yet. They didn't die in the engage. They didn't get locked down because of cleanse, so they got to back away yeah. and simply yeah. start landing down so much damage. Not just cleanse, the QSS as well on Bang. It doesn't matter how hard Coral wants to force that if they're going to cleanse back. And then Bang and Easy Hoon could just rain chaos from the back, do tons of damage to the rest of EDG. And yeah, let's take a look at tons this again. Coral indeed. wants to farce, f force that Mega Gnar so badly, and he gets a pretty good Gnarl to the wall, but the cleanse just takes him away. Yeah, cleanse instantly for them. Bang with the QSS, and now you can just see how Easy Hoon and Bang are sitting down here. Nobody can touch them because Mega Gnar has been used from Goro, and they have so good sustained DPS, especially from that Cassiopeia. Easy Hoon, once again, in terms of the team fights, yeah. really showing up. Had a good laning, it's bad to say, too. None of this damage from EDG impactful enough to turn SKT away from these fights. They're hitting ultimates on three people, and SKT is just still knocking at the door relentlessly. Looks like they're going to head back here, easily take Dragon for themselves. And I feel like we have seen in this game why Orianna as a pick has not been that great lately. We didn't see much pressure in the lane because you can't really. You right. have to sit back and farm very passive. Well, so SKT controlled that one thanks to some gangs from Bengi. Bad to say as well. And then it is in these team fights, so much of the current meta is about the mid game fights near dragons. Orianna, in order for her to become really a big carry, needs to sit on three items. And that's where we get the yeah. void stuff in as the third item. We only completed two now at this point, 27 minutes in. Didn't even have the death cap for that fight at the Dragon. Now Koro, top lane was cool beforehand, but he is way outnumbered. Able to shovel a few backwards, but they already have their assist tag on him. It's not going to be that much of a problem. Actually, I think they're going to give this one over to Easy Hoon. Very well chosen there. 3 0 5. He looks to finish his Rabidons quite soon with that kill. Bangy towards the mid lane to make sure there is no pressure that EG EDG can create here. And right now, SKT being able to take full control of the map. We're not even seeing the wards that EDG regularly places in their enemy's jungle. They haven't even really been on the side of SKT this game. Very early on in the game, EDG lost a lot of the control in the river. Had to play fairly passive. And most of what they've done is basically come around Koro in this top lane on this Gnar. He's been a hero on his own, but it's just not enough. Especially when they lose a big team fight at Dragon. That's a really big turning point for SK Telecom. They were already ahead, yeah. but that's what they needed to get the Baron as well. But even Bengi's Gragas has been quite on point this yeah. game. Being able to gank Pawn out in the mid lane, allow Easy Hoon to snowball that mid game. Now we have Easy Hoon sitting on a death cap as well. The sustained damage that will be coming out of SKT, thanks to Bengi pulling out this third jungle pick and finding success. Uh, I think has really caught EDG off guard. They were not respecting Bengi on progress whatsoever. And it's going to be such a big thing in the pick and ban phases to come. The fact that mm -hmm. Bengi now has more than two jungle champions he can play so well. Because again, remember, Rek'Sai Nuna was banned away. EDG suddenly might have to change the strategy and say, okay, Bengi's not the guy we're going to target. 
we're gonna maybe swap it against Easy Hoon, try and take away the Cassie yep. Azir. If we feel like that's too strong in the team fights, there are multiple changes you can make. Obviously, the teams are swapping side every game here. And possibly player. Possible player. Yeah, <laughs> there's always that chance. Always an option that they put Faker in for one of these games. Has to be decided within five minutes of the Nexus falling. And it's absolutely a choice that SKT has as they make their way through this best of five series against EDG for the midseason invitation, invitational finals. 12 to 5 as we come up on 30 minutes. SKT did pretty much thwart EDG's quick five dragons by taking number three. Let's see what happens here as SKT starts to pressure mid. And if you look at the map right now and what SKT wants to do, seeing as they don't really have a split push conversation, you, can, you can't focus on all three lanes at once. So they decided to take two of the mid lane and top lane. So they're completely warded off the jungle and they pushed down just the two lanes at once. Koro is trying to be annoying and buy time for his team, but he's now being caught all alone. Every time we see him, he's trying to escape down the lane towards this the This is good, though. Pace. This is good, because EDG is trying to push the mid lane, Ooh. and then Mako dies. And Mako dies indeed. Not enough forward wards, as we said before, from EDG here that have been yeah. placed. Barnes cut them already. off. They're walking right through the site of SKT still, and now they're going to get routed out from Marn, as you said, Jack. Clear Love's forced to fight him. Deft and Pawn are trying to figure out where they can put their DPS, and Deft actually has to fight Marin now. There's the shockwave. It only hits Bengi, but there's no damage coming out of EDG right now, and they are still forced to turn around, finally wearing down Bengi. Easy Hoon in a good spot now to take down Deft as he gives himself the resistances from the position reverser, but what a skirmish back and forth. EDG looks like they're trying to grab up the scraps here, but SKT is going to find everything that they want. Quickly over the wall, possibly. There's Marin just going to keep him in place for this last few kills. Not able to get him. <laughs> he refuses to die. Coral, keep running. We believe in you. Uh oh. Yep. <laughs> Coral was a god. Don't blink. SKT, though, have done a great job of itemizing this game as well. That's one of the big things that I think took the wind out of EDG's sails early on here. Having the cleanse on Easy Hoon and the third item QSS on Bang, not only to stop the Urgot position reverses, but also to stop any type of Meganar. And then Bang just goes and makes a flat-out mistake in the mid lane. Bang, he hits the ground. Yeah, that was... Right as we're giving him praise. <laughs> he goes and does that. All right, so let's see what happened here. Remember, Mako just got caught out. He's already dead, so Marin was teleporting in behind, trying to force EDG to take a fight with only four members. It's a good start, honestly. They get a lot of good ulties down. The Shockwave, though, look at this one here. Bengi, only one I believe it took damage from. Not even sure if he managed to body slam out of it right. at first. And now the damage is simply running out for EDG once again. Easy Hoon and Bang are left to just deal all the damage they want. Two hyper carries that they have to deal with, and really fed hyper carries, especially if you look at Easy Hoon now. Four completed items after this fight, where he picked up the two kills. Marin Koro is so sneaky, but yeah, when we look at the damage dealt the champions chart after this game, I know that Easy Hoon's going to be really, really high on it. And that, that's what's been happening when Izuhun is in these games for SKT. Yeah. He does the majority of the team's damage. He's, yeah. These Azir and Cassiopeia picks that he's able to pull out have been absolutely devastating. It's probably the main reason he's, aside from all the other things, that he's seeing a lot of this play over Faker because his Cassiopeia and Azir are just on that level of its own. The current meta just fits him so well. You don't have to make big flashy plays in the mid lane. You don't need to be an assassin who can kill you, the enemy mid lane, and start roaming around. You can shine in team fights because so many games are decided around these dragons here, around the barons, in the big five on five. So if you have a guy who can play champs like this at this level, use him. Use him indeed. You only have to give him a bit to get going. We saw those bangy ganks towards the mid lane. He just took a flash blown there onto Pawn. And he was not able to control. 325 to 270 in CS in that lane. We've seen Easy who have been able to roam multiple times off of the lane as well to create up trouble for the other lanes. And we see Bang taking the dragon on his own here. SKT are so far ahead you can start pulling off plays like this and also keeping control of the Baron. Because again, we know EDG loves to go for that yep. Baron here. So if you send five guys to Dragon 33 minutes in, that's a very easy call in for EDG to try at least come back by sneaking a Baron in. And also just like the, the build we often see or we always see from Bang. No Hurricane. You have to be able to kill these tanks here. So you need some crit for yourself. He goes for the Static Shift second. Also maxing Q in the lane for people who wonder how he plays it. Mm -hmm. So here are the wards now from EDG. Still not many encroaching on the side of SKT's map vision. 
Yeah. At this point, SKT has been able to take control back. They picked up two dragons. Now, since they've taken out only uh, only four turrets, they have a couple of options. They can either try and get deep vision control to go for Baron, or they can try and get better wave control and get those other turrets down. They're still running the risk of a really good initiation from EDG, which is why they're taking their time here. EDG has set up this bottom lane wave almost a minute ago. It's been slow pushing all the way from their own tier two tower. Because there's no teleport for Marin, it was used in the mid lane. They're hoping that SKT will send someone down to clear it and therefore open up for EDG to start a fight around the Baron, five versus four. SKT though, they have full control of it. They keep a lot of members around the mid lane. They don't really send anyone down yet. And now Marin, because his TP is about to be ready, can go down, catch the entire wave, and he can now start pushing it back. Or SK Tele uh, Telecom can decide that we can play around this side of the map as well because we have that teleport ready. We can push it in, we can force Marin to sit there, or sorry, force Coral to sit there, and then see if you can bait out his Meganar and then potentially start a fight at Baron. There are many ways by SKT at the moment yeah. to play the map. Works out very nicely that Marin's teleport is just coming up as he gets the brunt of that bottom wave cleared out, so it'll push back in their favor. We'll see what the follow up here is from SKT. They could be sideswiped here, but they are completely ready for it. You can see Wolf and actually Bang standing in position if he needs to get a good fake call off. Yeah, mid lane is not the lane for SK Telecom to push at the moment because they don't have any deep wards on the top side here where EDG is running around. So you always expose yourself to a flank if you just start pushing up into wards the enemy base. So they have to worry about these two outer turrets and they need to get some wards in the jungle up here on this top side. Otherwise, this tier two tower is going to stay untouched for EDG, and we're just gonna have this dance around the Baron that nobody really wants to start, because you don't want to risk being caught in there by, let's say, a Sejuani ulti. Yeah, there's some tight corridors. Yes, there is the QSS and the cleanse still on SKT, but if you find the right thing, there's been a lot of fights we've seen in the LPL where EDG has such great mid-fight target prioritization that they can just burst down the carries if they get their mitts on them and change the total context of the game. You know, Mako lands one hook, gets in for a flay and the whole game could change. It's unlikely in this time because of how good a SKT is and how patient they are being, not to mention the Luton's Echo being completed onto Izuhun. Yeah. Basically, I mean, you give him a couple seconds on any target and he's gonna kill it from full. Uh, SKT is in a position to win, but it's gonna take some time. This is how you make sure you win damage done as a Cassiopeia. You get Luton's Echo fifth item and you just start <laughs> spamming away while moving around. Deft can look to target out Easy Hunter with his ulti. That should be the way for EDG to try and get in there. See if you can swap him around, chain CC on him, and of course for EDG, never stay too far away from this Baron because there's a Kalista, and now they're going in for a fight. Let's see if SKT want to take it. Let's see how they can prioritize this. The ball was on Clearlove, but they pull it back out. Just Koro and Clearlove now to fight three Barroned up members. Easy Hoon has all the time in the world with Bang and Wolf to fire out the DPS. Marm with a great flash. Koro slams him up against the wall. They get a great shockwave on three members of SKT, but Pawn goes down before any follow-up damage can come through. Easy Hoon is still full. HP in this fight and just slaughtering people with double fangs. Wolf was able to pick up that last kill. There's one of the hooks that they would have loved in the fight, but it's really just to stave off Easy Hoon's, Easy Hoon's final kill. He'll still land the snakes. He'll still pick it up. Easy Hoon, easy life. EDG's not going to get much better than that Nar into Orianna combo, but then Easy Hoon on that Cassiopeia, as we're saying, unless they get him down, he's going to kill everybody. And normally EDG is a team that's so good at finding the right target in these team fights, but they've been behind nearly all game long, and SK Telecom looking very strong. Looking at 38 minutes and already on the Nexus turrets. Mako and Clear Love. Pretty big guys, but I don't know if they're big enough or if SKT even cares that they're standing toe to toe with them right now. They are gonna finish off the Nexus turrets and it looks like they're going for a few more kills on the stats along with the Nexus. Game one of the finals goes to SKT over EDG. That last fight too, it wasn't an easy job, but somebody had to do it. Marin takes so much damage for EDG and then still flashed away for a big distraction. A 0 3 13, despite a very difficult laning phase. Marin making that pick work. I mean, I still think that was a fascinating pick and ban phase. It was. Uh, especially with the information available beforehand, and it will change going into the next game because Bengi performed on Gragas. I just love the trust in Bengi saying, Shh. Can we first pick a Gragas for you? Can we give up the Urgot and then try and build around that? And they do it. It pays off. He had such a good early start to this game. The only member that really gave SKT any problems was Koro in that, in that top lane. 
but it's not enough having a big tank when you don't have the damage to back it up. And rightfully so, Koro actually doing about 2,200 more damage than Easy Hoon on that NAR. <laughs> oh, Easy Hoon? <laughs> Step it up. Step it up, indeed. Koro is still definitely a big factor and something they'll have to look out for. But SKT taking game one. And for a look at that game one win, let's kick it back to Dash and the crew at the analyst desk.